Hello boys and girls, I hope you all are best in your health. Today we'll study about solutions and colligative properties. This is the second chapter in class 12 chemistry. I'm planning to make a series of educational videos in coming days covering almost all chapters and I hope that will help you to get prepared for HS examination. To understand this chapter, we must learn and know some basic concepts of concentration units like uh, molarity, molality, mole fraction etc and also about vapor pressure of a solution including a law called Raoult's law. Let us start with the units of concentration. There are many units for measuring the concentration of a solution most of which you have studied in a chapter called titration in class 11. Uh, here are the important ones. Let us start with molarity. To understand molarity assume that you have taken a volumetric flask with a capacity of 1 liter there is a mark here. This is an empty flask. You are adding 40 gram of NaOH. Why you are adding 40 grams of NaOH? Because this is 1 gram mole of NaOH. Similarly, you can add 180 grams of glucose because 180 is the molecular mass of glucose. You add this in an empty bottle and you add water, you dilute it, then you add water up to this mark. That becomes one molar solution. So it is the molarity means it is the number of moles, it is the number of gram moles of solute dissolved in one liter solution at a given temperature. And the formula or relationship of molarity is number of moles of solute that you have added into one liter and divided by volume of solution which is taken as 1 liter. Now molality is different. This is the different unit of concentration. Assume that you have taken a volumetric flask with capacity of 1 liter. There is a mark here and is already filled with 1 kg of solvent which means 1000 gram of solvent. Generally it is water. 1000 gram of water or 1 kg of water. Then you will add 40 gram of NaOH or 180 grams of glucose or 36.5 gram of HCl. This solution becomes one molal solution. Small m represents molality and capital M represents molarity. A mole fraction generally represented by letter X is a simple concept. It is the number of moles of component divided by total number of moles. If in a container there are capital N number of moles of solvent and we are adding small n number of moles of solute, then total number of moles present in the solution will be small n plus capital N and the mole fraction of solute this is the mole fraction of solute will be equal to number of moles of solute divided by total number of moles present in the solution. To understand Raoult's law, we'll assume one container where there are solute and solvent. If solute is volatile, then we will have vapors of solvent as well as that of solute coming up and the total vapor pressure that will be created above the liquid will be of solute as well as that of solvent. But if there is a solvent which is volatile but there is a solute which is non-volatile. So we can say that the vapor pressure of a solution is less than that of a pure solvent at a given temperature if the solute dissolved is non-electrolyte and non-volatile. So therefore we write P1 equal to x1 p1 naught. This is the vapor pressure of solvent. This is the mole fraction of solvent and this is the vapor pressure of pure solvent. So this is the expression of Raoult's law according to its definition. For any solution the partial vapor pressure of each volatile component in the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction. We have to remember that we will be considering non-volatile and non-electrolyte solute in whole of this chapter. Non-volatile means the one which does not vaporize or vaporizes least. Non-electrolyte means any substance that produces no ions 
or the no ionization will take place, no dissociation will take place. If any solution obeys Raoult's law, that is called ideal solution and solution which is disobeying Raoult's law is considered as non-ideal solution. Now we will be talking about colligative properties. This is very important properties. Colligative property totally depends on the number of solid particles. Only number, but not on the nature of particles. Colligative properties have nothing to do with the density of particles, the size of particles, and the properties of particles. It deals only primarily with the number of solid particles. If one is bigger one and the other one is smaller, this is taken as 2. If there is smaller and smaller, this is also taken as 2. It considers number only, not the density or the weight or any other properties. Colligative properties are relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point and osmotic pressure. As we mentioned that when non-electrolyte solute is added to a solvent, there occurs a lowering of vapor pressure and that causes the elevation of boiling point and depression of freezing point. All these three are interconnected. Osmotic pressure is different. We will be discussing all these colligative properties one by one. To understand relative lowering of vapor pressure, we can consider pure solvent, pure solvent. If this is mixed with non-electrolyte, non-volatile solute, this becomes solution. Solution. If the vapor pressure of pure solvent is taken as P and the vapor pressure of solution is taken as PS, then you can clearly see lowering means P is greater than PS. The vapor pressure decreases as we move from pure solvent to solution, which means P is greater than PS, which means delta P or change in vapor pressure will be P minus PS. Now, when any non electrolyte solute non-volatile solute is dissolved in solvent, the relative lowering of vapor pressure is directly proportional to the mole fraction of solute. This is lowering of vapor pressure. Lowering of vapor pressure is delta P, but delta P divided by original vapor pressure is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Now this has become relative lowering of vapor pressure. You are comparing the change with the original, so the word relative comes here is directly proportional to you are not writing the sign of proportionality because of certain reason directly proportional to mole fraction of solute now pure solvent has number of moles capital n and uh, solute will have number of moles small n and the mole fraction of solute will be n divided by small n divided by plus capital n delta p divided by p equal to small n means small w divided by m not weight of solid divided by molecular weight of solid weight of solid divided by molecular weight of solid num number of solvent number of moles of solvent capital w weight of solvent capital m molecular weight of solid this is the relationship of relative lowering of vapor pressure this can also be written as delta p divided by p equal to w by m divided by capital W by M when if this this small thing is neglected but most of the time this should not be neglected this becomes W by M into capital M divided by capital W so this is the equation remember delta P means P minus PS where P represents vapor pressure of pure solvent and PS represents vapor pressure of solution so delta P divided by P equal to W by M into M divided by capital W will be the final relation. But we will be using this relation to solve numerical problem. Most of the time this is utilized for other deduction purposes. Now one numerical problem based on relative lowering of vapor pressure. If vapor pressure of 12.2 percent weight by weight aqueous solution of a non-volatile solute at 100 degrees Celsius temperature is 746.6 millimeter mercury. Calculate the molar mass of the solute 
This is from higher secondary examination 2014. Now see number of will be weight divided by molecular weight. This is small n number of moles of solute. Number of moles of solvent will be solvent will be because 12.2 percent is is given we are subtracting 12.2 from 100 to get the weight of solvent divided by 18 molecular weight of water solvent is water it's because aqueous solution this is 87.8 divided by 18 now we have p minus p s divided by p equal to n divided by n plus capital N. This is the formula of relative lowering of vapor pressure. We have 760, you know, vapor pressure of pure solvent is 760 millimeter of mercury, 746.6 divided by 760 equal to 12.2 divided by m into 18 divided by 87.8 this is 13.4 divided by 760 equal to 12.2 m into 18 divided by 87.8 therefore m equal to 12.2 into 18 into 760 divided by 13.4 into 87.8 if you calculate this with the help of a calculator this will come nearly as 141 and this is the answer this is the molecular mass of solute this is also called molar mass of solute now let us try to understand elevation of boiling point now when there occurs a lowering of vapor pressure there occurs increase in boiling point and increase and decrease are proportionate they are directly proportional to each other when non-electrolyte non-volatile solute is added to a solvent increase in boiling point or elevation of boiling point is directly proportional to the lowering of vapor pressure now if you take in the similar manner pure solvent having boiling point t1 if non-electrolyte non-volatile solute is added to it this becomes solution and solution will have a boiling point different boiling point and it's t2 which is higher which is greater t1 or t2 elevation of boiling point means t1 increases to t2 so t2 is greater than t1 so therefore change in temperature or increase in temperature which is represented by delta tb equal to t2 minus t1 now according to this statement delta tb or the increase in boiling point is directly proportional to decrease in vapor pressure delta p so delta tb is proportional to you know we have delta p divided by p equal to w by m into capital m divided by w this was the expression we obtained in while dealing vapor pressure so what you have w by m into capital m into capital p divided by capital w so delta tb now capital m and capital p this is the molar mass of solvent which is constant if it is water it's always 18 this is the vapor pressure of pure solvent and this is also always constant two constant numbers will remove the sign of proportionality so we have k w by m into capital w now if w by m that is the number of mole of solute is one one mole of solute is taken and capital w equal to 1000 gram this is the condition of molality you remember that this is the condition of molality we are imposing the condition of molality then this equation becomes delta tb equal to k divided by 1000 now you know k is a constant 1000 is a constant number we can write this as kb 
Now therefore, if you see only this portion of the equation, k equal to 1000 kb. Now putting this in equation number 1, what do you get? Delta tb equal to 1000 kb small w divided by m capital W. So this is the equation that we require to understand elevation of boiling point as well as to solve numerical problems based on the elevation of boiling point. So we had delta Tb equal to 1000 Kb into small w divided by small m capital W. Remember the significance of each term. This is a constant. This is weight of solute. Try to understand the significance of each term. So Kb is a constant. Delta Tb is the increase in boiling point. Small w is the weight of solute. Small m is molecular weight of solute or molar mass of solute. Capital W is the weight of solvent. Now if you remember this portion is also called molarity. So this can be converted into delta Tb equal to Kb into molality. Sometimes such equation is also needed to solve numerical problems where the term Kb is called molal boiling point elevation constant or it is also called ebullioscopic constant. We will define this constant now. You know when W by M equal to 1 and capital W equal to 1000 then 1000 gram then we had delta Tb equal to Kb. Remember that? So Kb or ebullioscopic constant or molal boiling point elevation constant is equivalent to the increase in boiling point when one mole of non-volatile or non-electrolyte solute is dissolved in 1000 gram of solvent. So how do you write that? Kb is equivalent to increase in boiling point, increase in BP when 1 gram mole of non-volatile, non-electrolyte as usual solute is added to 1000 gram of solvent. So this is how we defined Kb. Let us try to solve one numerical problem based on elevation of boiling point. When 3 gram of solute W equal to 3 gram was dissolved in 100 gram of CCL4 carbon tetrachloride weight of solvent 100 gram. The boiling point of solution was elevated by 0 0.6 Kelvin. So delta Tb equal to 0 0.6 Kelvin. Do not convert the temperature, do not convert the unit of mass and temperature. Compare to pure CCL4. Calculate the relative molecular mass of solute. Small m is to be found out. Kv is given 5.03. Do not look at these units. Now we have delta Tb equal to 1000 Kb into small w divided by small m capital W. This is the equation. Delta Tb is 0 0.6 equal to 1000 kb is 5.03 into small w is 3 small m is not known and capital w is 100 cancelled so therefore m equal to 10 into 5.03 into 3 divided by 0 0.6 Six and this will come out as 251.5. This is the molecular mass of solute. Depression of freezing point is very similar to elevation of boiling point, so I will avoid all derivation. You have uh, when non electrolyte, non volatile solute is dissolved in a solvent, the decrease in freezing point delta Tf now solution is directly proportional to the lowering of vapor pressure, is directly proportional to delta P. Now delta Tf 
because we have delta p divided by p equal to w by m into capital m divided by w from this we are getting small w m into capital m p this will go on in the very very similar manner will reach to a relationship like 1000 kf w divided by small m capital w the only difference between the earlier relation and this is there was tb in case of elevation of boiling point now it is tf due to freezing point and there was kb in the elevation of boiling point now it is kf for freezing point and this kf is called molal freezing point depression constant this is also called cryoscopic constant this can also be written as delta tf equal to since this 1000 into small w divided by small m capital w is the expression of molality so delta tf equal to molality into kf this expression is also equally useful you can define kf in the similar manner as you did in case of kb now when small w by small m is taken as one one mole of non-volatile non-electrolyte solute is dissolved in 1000 gram of solvent then we will have delta tf equal to 1000 into small w divided by small m capital w into kf this will become delta tf equal to kf from this relationship you can define kf kf is defined as the decrease in freezing point when one mole of non-electrolyte non-volatile solute is dissolved in 1000 gram of solvent i'm not going to write the definition you can consult the elevation of boiling part now a numerical problem based on depression of freezing point this is very simple 2 gram of non-electrolyte solute w equal to 2 gram dissolved in 100 grams capital w equal to 100 gram benzene lowered the freezing point by 0 0.50 k delta t f equal to 0 0.5 k freezing point depression constant of benzene is k f is also given this is 5.12 find out the relative molar mass of solute m is not known this question was there in higher secondary examination 2015 very simple there was a relation delta tf equal to 1000 kf into small w small m capital w you just put the values 0.5 equal to 1000 into kf is 5.12 into small w is 2 gram divided by m into capital w is 100 cancel 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 therefore m equal to 20 into 5.12 divided by 0 0.5 which is equal to 204.8 this is the molecular mass of solid now we'll talk about osmosis osmosis is a very known process i think you have started in biology there are two reasons one is lower concentration reason and the other is higher concentration reason they are separated by a semi permeable membrane lower concentration reason will have higher concentration of solvent whereas higher concentration will have higher concentration of solute so movement of solvent molecules from lower concentration to higher concentration through a semi permeable membrane is called osmosis it is a process by which solvent molecules move from the region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration through a semi permeable membrane now osmosis will be followed by osmotic pressure now let us try to understand osmotic pressure now there are two reasons one is lower concentration region and higher concentration region solvent molecules are moving from the region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration and to stop this movement you have to apply an external pressure on the region of higher concentration but that should not be too high or too low it should be just to prevent osmosis that pressure exerted on the region of higher concentration is termed as osmotic pressure this is represented by pi band of mid laws about osmotic pressures first law is pi is proportional to 1 upon b this is very similar to Boyle's law volume is inverse, inversely proportional to pressure temperature remaining constant yeah, t remains constant number of moles remains constant 
This is called Boyle's and Hoff's law. Second law is osmotic pressure is proportional to temperature. If temperature increases, osmotic pressure increases. This is similar to Charles law. In this case, volume and number of moles will remain constant. And the third one is pi is proportional to number of moles. When T and V remain constant, and this third law resembles Avogadro's law. Combining all these three, we get pi is proportional to 1 upon V dot T dot N when all vary T, V, N change pi v equal to n r t we are inserting a constant called r which is universal it was universal gas constant earlier now it is universal liquid constant now we have pi v equal to n r t pi this is osmotic pressure this is volume this is number of moles, this is temperature in Kelvin scale, and this is universal liquid constant. The value of R is 8.314 joule per degree Kelvin per mole, or R equal to 0 0.082 liter atmosphere per degree Kelvin per mole. When pressure is in atmosphere and volume is in liter, then you can use the value of R as 0 0.082 liter atmosphere per degree Kelvin per mole pi equal to n by v rt pi equal to n by v this term is concentration so we can also get this equation similarly pi v equal to n rt can also be converted as pi v equal to w by m rt as you all know that number of moles is equivalent to weight of the solute and molecular weight of solute so you can get several relations in this manner what is isotonic solutions two solutions having same osmotic pressures and there is no movement of solvent molecules on either side they are termed as isotonic solutions isotonic solutions means both the solutions will have same values of pi let us do one numerical problem based on osmotic pressure now please remember that in all the previous cases where when we did numerical problems the conversion of temperature from degree kelvin to degree celsius was not necessary the conversion of any type of other units was not necessary but in solving problems of osmotic pressure you should be very very careful because the conversion of unit is absolutely important. How much glucose per liter should be used for an intravenous solution to match 7.65 atmosphere at 37 degrees Celsius osmotic pressure of blood? So you are inserting glucose into the blood, and these two solutions, glucose and blood, should be isotonic. That means they must have same osmotic pressure. Here is glucose, here is blood. How much glucose? W is needed. Per liter volume is 1 liter. Should be used for an intravenous solution to match 7.65 atmosphere. Pi is 7.65 atmosphere. At 37 degrees Celsius, temperature is 37 plus 273 equal to 310 Kelvin. You have pi V equal to nRT pi v equal to w by m r t therefore pi is 7.65 into volume is liter w is not known m is the molecular weight of glucose 180 into 0 0.082 remember we are using the value of r as 0 0.082 means um, our volume should be in liter and our pressure should be in atmosphere so therefore w equal to 7.65 into 180 divided by 0 0.082 into 310 and this is equal to 54.5 now this is very important abnormal molecular mass when does molecular mass becomes abnormal 
number one condition is when the solute undergoes dissociation what does it mean by dissociation you have NaCl if it is added into solution it becomes Na plus and Cl minus now one mole of NaCl is giving this is one mole this is one mole this is one mole so one mole of NaCl is giving two moles of particles since colligative properties deal only with the number of particles the number has become double here NaCl produces double the number of molecules number of particle is doubled here and since colligative property deals with the number of particles only in this case the colligative property is also doubled and this is indicated by a factor called Van Toff's factor Van Toff factor is represented by letter small i in this case i equal to 2 which means the number of particles doubled if we take CaCl2 this will ionize as Ca plus 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 2 Cl minus 1 mole is giving 3 particles 3 moles in this case Van Toff's factor is equal to 3 now since colligative property is inversely proportional to molecular mass the colligative property is doubled which means molecular mass is halved in this case colligative property has increased threefold so therefore the molecular mass has come down to one third now there is a there is another case when the solute undergoes association molecules like CS3, CS2OH ethyl alcohol CS3, COOH one ethyl alcohol molecule is associated with another ethyl alcohol molecule by means of hydrogen bonding so they remain in pair so two ethyl alcohol two ethyl alcohol molecules two moles become one mole association has become half of the initial the colligative property has decreased decreased to half so therefore the molecular weight which is inversely proportional to the colligative property becomes doubled in this case so i equal to half acetic acid two molecules of acetic acid combining with each other and remaining in pair with the help of hydrogen bond so therefore two molecules become one so therefore i equal to half i is van Toff's factor you can define van Toff's factor as it is the ratio of observed colligative property to the calculated or normal colligative properties now for example if NaCl breaks up as Na plus and Cl minus this one molecule becomes two so colligative property is doubled i equal to two so therefore molecular weight becomes halved since molecular weight is inversely proportional to the colligative property its actual molecular weight is 58.5 58.5 which is normal or calculated molecular mass 58.5 but since the colligative property is doubled and molecular weight is halved molecular weight will appear 58.5 divided by 2 and this is absorbed this is normal so i equal to normal 58.5 divided by 58.5 divided by 2 so they go to 2 for initial so you can define Van Toff's factor in either way in terms of colligative properties or in terms of molecular mass but the ratio is different it is the ratio of absorbed to calculated it is the ratio of calculated to absorbed so there are many numerical problems I hope you will try those numerical problems and if you face any kind of difficulty you are always free to ask me questions through whatsapp or through any other means I will make more videos for you in the future Thank you.